What's going on everybody? My name is Jordan and welcome to another tutorial. I'm super happy that you're here with me today. And this is actually not an audio tutorial. Usually I do audio tutorials. This is a video tutorial. Thought I would share with you guys a, to a technique that I use to match a green screen shot with a background, whether 2D or 3D, doesn't matter, uh, by using a combination of Premiere and After Effects. Uh, so there are a lot of ways that you can do this, a lot of ways that are more in-depth. This is just the quick and easy way that I do it uh, most times, especially when I ha you know, have a bunch of different green screenshots for a music video where things are going to be changing and, and you know, everything really quickly, where <clears throat> it may not have to be necessarily perfect. This is just the way that I do it. So I have two flat layers here. This footage was shot uh, with my um, Sony uh, 6300, A6300. Um, and it was in the um, XAVC format, so it's in the really, really high quality far format for 1080. It's not shot in 4K. And then this uh, image that I have right here is just from uh, I pointed my cell phone at a image in a, I mean at a building in a Girardelli Square. So it's uh, yeah, that's a cool little warehouse. Uh, so I want to show you how I actually do some matching. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do in After Effects. Well, here, actually, let me tell you how I keyed this out. I didn't key it in uh, After Effects. After Effects key, key light is amazing, but is extremely hard when you have footage that may not be perfectly lit or you may be too close to the green screen. Right now I'm in my room. That, I mean, that's where this was filmed. So... I don't have a ton of space. I should be much farther away from the green, the green screen than I am. But because I have the space that I have in my room, I have to make do for footage like that. And then, the you know, I should have more lights and things like that, larger lights and things like that. Since I don't, the best way to key I've found is actually in Premiere. Uh, Premiere has an amazing uh, keying program called Ultra Key, which is just insane. Uh, that it, it's sort of made for kind of, for lack of a better term, it's kind of made for kind of like consumer level footage. That it does, it handles noise and uh, picking out all different types of green out of your out of your footage, like really, really, really well. Um, and doesn't leave it looking just absolutely crappy. A key light, like if you have a pro level set up and you or you have a really really well lit plenty of room you're away from the green screen set up key lights awesome i have not found that to be the case for me it has absolutely killed me ultra key is amazing let me show you how i export it out um, with ultra key um, baked in uh, all i have to do is just mute everything else or use the um the the toggling of the track output to mute everything else. Uh, and then what I do is I go up to file. Oh, I also have it masked, by the way. Um, all the stuff that I don't need is masked out. Uh, I just go to file, export media. And these are my settings. I have it under QuickTime. That's the, the, the one that I know works with this method. And then uh, the video codec is animation. And then I've it, yours probably will look like this. You actually want to set this to um, 8 BPC plus alpha. And the alpha channel is going to be um, the, the, the transparency of the black here, uh, which is what we want. And then the maximum render quality. So and then I save that as whatever. And then we're good. Uh, so then you can bring it into After Effects. So I have that layer here, and then I have my picture there. So the first thing that I do is I use, it's a stock plugin called Toner. I'm going to drag an instance of that onto this. And you know, now, and it's kind of funny, this already kind of looks interesting. Like, that would be kind of fun for a music video to do that sort of monochromatic kind of sepia sort of look for everything. But we're not going to do that. We're actually going to alter this a bit. So I usually leave it on the tritone. There are other options here, but I leave it on the tritone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna choose highlights, mintones, and shadows from our background image to apply to the foreground image, which is the green screen um, keyed subject here. Uh, so I'm gonna choose a highlight. Highlights are kind of hard, uh, especially in this, because there are a bunch of highlights in the windows and there's some in the floor, so it's kind of like this back and forth kind of thing. So I'm just gonna choose the highlight from the background. Um, I'm actually gonna, yeah, 
yeah, I definitely got it. Uh, and then uh, mid tones, I'm gonna choose. I will. I'm I'm leaning towards kind of wanting to choose some of the brick. I might be able to choose down here on the floor, but that's not enough of a mid tone for me. I think more of like the brick around here is gonna be a better mid tone. Um, and that's really it's really kind of dark, but don't worry about it. We'll we'll fix it. And then the shadows, we want to find something not not like this is probably too shadowy because it's too close to like true black instead what we want is something that's sort of in the middle there and they and you'll notice that that it's it's all just really applied this sort of red to everything but there are specific kinds of red the reds that we got from the background which is nice then we're gonna use this little slider and you can actually expand it to make it a little easier uh blend with original and we can crank it all the way so that's what it originally was which doesn't look horrible but as we go, you'll notice that it changes, you know, I mean, it, it's, it's pulling from colors that are, are, are already in our image here, which, which I believe is good. If we turn it off versus turning it on. Now you'll notice that it's a little, it's it's gotten a lot darker, which is not necessarily what we want. So we can go to exposure here. Uh, and you don't wanna choose the text one. That one won't do anything. You wanna choose the color correction one. I'm just gonna drag that over after toner. And then I'm just going to, you can always do this. So obviously too bright, I'm gonna dial it back. Somewhere in there, that's probably a little too much. You don't want to make massive changes to your image. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's not done, uh, but I'm all right with that. So those are the only two things that I do. There's probably plenty of other things you can do. You know. Oh, actually, you know what? There is one other thing. I select the uh, the the foreground image. I go to layer, uh, and then I go to layer styles, inner shadow, uh, and then expand this. All the layer styles are here. So then I go into inner shadow. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can see what's going on. Uh, I'm going to pull the opacity down. Uh, I'm going to choose my color of my shadow, something around there. Uh, and then um, I'm going to change the distance. And then I'm going to adjust the size so it, it blends a little more. And pull the opacity back. Because the light's coming from the back. Um, so this technically is not really the right direction. Um, instead, the direction should sort of be coming from, let's see, so let's change the angle. You kind of have to experiment with it. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. It's not the it's not the best. My shoulder's sort of moving forward with this, so it would technically be more like that. But that add to me that adds just a tad more realism. You could probably add. Uh, you pull the opacity back. I mean, that's with none. I just like adding a little bit. I just feel like it looks a little better doing that. Um, so that's how that looks. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're going to export this out again. Uh, and we're gonna add to render queue. Uh, I'm going to go to output module. I'm going to still keep it in QuickTime. Uh, and then um, <clears throat> we wanna go to channels. RGB plus alpha, and I'll show you why in just one second. Um, all good. There's no reason to have the audio. I mean, the audio on. What I want to do, and actually, it's gonna, it, it's probably gonna kick that um, render setting to the curb, because what I need to do is I need to go back into the comp because I don't want this to be 
the background. It could be, but I don't want that to be the background. I want to pull it back into Premiere and replace my background in there. It's just the way that I want to do it for this specific uh, tutorial. So I'm just going to hit File. I'm just going to do it again. Add to Render Queue. Output. QuickTime. RGB plus Alpha. I've already got it set to animation. Sometimes it'll be in other codecs. We want it to be an animation because it's one of the ones that uses the alpha channel thing. Uh, audio output off. All good. Okay. I'm going to change this to tester. I know where it's saved. Render. I think it rendered a couple other ones in there, but that's okay. I know which one it is. Uh, so now I'm just going to bring this over here. Um, and then we need to change the positioning to be closer to what we had before. That's closer. Er, you know. Uh, so now I'm going to go into my bin. And then I'm going to find tester. There it is. And I'm going to drag it over. Alpha channel has still stayed in. I'm going to set my in and out points so I can loop it. And that shadow may or may not work for this specific shot. It can sometimes. I just wanted to show it. So you'll notice though, it's still not, it still doesn't like look like it's like, you know, there. One of the things that I tend to do is use an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go back into my bin again. Um, I'm going to right click new item, adjustment layer. And that's, you can leave all that as default. I'm gonna drag this adjustment layer just over what we want to affect. And that's um, our foreground layer and the bottom layer, obviously. Um, and on the adjustment layer, you can do whatever you want. You can literally put anything you want on there. What I usually do is I just go over here to Lumetri Color. Oh, actually, Lumetri Color is not going to work on that. Uh, what you actually have to do, I, I feel sheepish now. Uh, what you actually have to do is you have to go to um, video effects under color correction. You have to use this Lumetri color to go specifically onto the adjustment layer, which kind of sucks. Um, but now from here, what we can do is we can adjust. Oh, lol. You know what? I think it was actually fine. Check it out. I think it was actually fine. Look, this is good. I'm leaving this in the tutorial. Always check if it's if the toggle track output is on or off. I'm leaving this in because that's a very good lesson. Uh, so actually, I think the Lumetri color should work right out of the gate. Yep, it's fine. I'm a I'm a dork. Uh, yeah. So from here, I can adjust uh, everything as a whole now because I've matched the footage together as closely as I could like as independent entities like or really just working on the on the foreground character trying to match it to the background now I I have much greater control over my color correction and you'll notice now that changing everything this I'm just changing the temperature of the of the white balance I mean just cranking it all the way is much more like just that one screen like like i said when it starts moving i'd want to add camera shake and other things and stuff like that um you know but just this on its own just just changing the the temperature really like brings everything together now one might say well why did you even bother doing the um why did you even bother doing the, the, the color matching and stuff? Like I said, by trying to do everything that you can to the foreground layer to make it look like the background layer at the beginning, and there are other ways to continue on with that process. By doing that, then when you add the, the adjustment layer for the Lumetri color to, um, you know, to sort of put like a mask over everything, 
it's just better. I mean, it it, it just it, it it works better. You don't have something that's like a, especially if you've forgotten to change like your white balance or something like that on your green screen like source material. It would suck if you had it on, you know, 3400K or something like that, or 5400K or something like that, either really, really cool or really, really hot white balance. And then you try to put that onto this and then didn't want and then and then like we're trying to they're 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 conflicting they're battling each other so um from here we could just even just go through the creative i love these looks these looks are freaking i love i love messing with these just go through the looks just as a starting point and i'm gonna i always you always want to back down the, the intensity everything should be like you should never crank everything that just it, it, uh, you know oh, you better have a, like a really in my opinion a really darn good reason for cranking stuff but like this this starts to look very like grungy and bad uh so what what we're gonna do is we're just gonna back it off just start crushing the blacks a little bit and then a lot of people love faded film it can add a sort of glossiness to your to your video it sort of makes it look more like s -log. I'm just going to add a little bit of it. Um, and then, uh, you know, I mean, you could just, I mean, really just mess around. I mean, you know, I can cool off the whole image just a little bit. It's all, it, it all gets very orangey when you do that. I'm going to cool off the image just a tad. Maybe up the exposure, maybe, maybe not. I don't, know, I don't really want to. Maybe just a bit, just a bit, you know. Maybe. Yeah, we have the faded film, so you can't really crush the blacks any more than you already have. Um, that's really it. I mean, you could do like a like a split tone if you wanted to on this one. Might be interesting. Um, blue shadow. I mean, sorry. Um, blue highlight and green shadow is how I usually do it. Eh, I don't really want to do that. So, and that's the other thing that you that you, you don't you don't want to do too much with this, but that that's that's a decent amount. And I've already I already have um, a uh, this is under frick this is under Vash it's a uh, Vashi's wide like extreme widescreen or something like that. I'll put a link to the, in the description for the pack that I have, but it's basically a bunch of of mats. You could do this easily, but it's just a PNG file um, that. Um, basically makes it look like there's a, um, a widescreen like letterbox on your on your footage. See, there it is. So that already doesn't it do, it doesn't look horrible. Yeah, there's and you know and there's some harsh edges and stuff like that, but that's a lot better than where it started with no with no color correction whatsoever. Um. So that is basically it. That's that's just how I do, you know, how I do matching. Now, you don't have to, but this, like I said, that's just the way that I do a lot of my matching. You can skip the toner. You can skip, you know, there, there are some things that you can do. Um, but I definitely like being able to say, can I just have a single layer like my green screen shot here? Can I have that single layer key it with ultra key and then bring it into After Effects? If nothing else, that is that like, like if you don't take anything else away from this tutorial, that within itself, using the animation codec and the quick time, I mean the quick time codec with the animation codec or whatever it is, um, or the, I guess the the quick time format with the animation codec, just that on its own, like is amazing. Like it, it took me a long time to figure that out. Uh, there were a lot of. Um, uh, a lot of people saying to use like PNG sequences and stuff like that. And that's just like, oh, Lord, please, I don't want to do a PNG sequence. It's going to, you know, n now I don't have any sound. And it's just like, oh, gosh, it's like so by doing it this way, this is a much uh, it's a much cleaner way to get your key out um, to be able to bring into, you know, whatever. Uh, and then um, and then you're good. You know, I, 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 I it just works so if nothing else that's that's a really good that's a really good tip but like i said that's just how i start to attempt to match two things by trying to reintroduce the colors that are in the scene that i'm trying to put my character in try to do that 
by um, by using the toner and the exposure. So I hope this tutorial uh, helped you out and taught you some things, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you so much for watching.